Hi, hello, welcome to Nikadami Foundation classes. So today we are going to discuss about implementing food resources lecture three. But before going to the class, yes, take down the timetable of uh, our YouTube channel of mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology, right? And yes, if you have got any sort of doubt in biology, maybe the questions, whatever we have discussed in our previous classes, you can directly ask me through Telegram app. So for that, first you have to download Telegram app and then type. tinyurl.com slash an academy foundation. So by typing this URL, you are able to join to a group and then you can ask questions directly in the group or personally as well, right? And yes, very important about our an academy learning app. So what is so special in this app? So this is the top trending app in the Play Store if you see, right? And also here, not only for a uh, class ninth and tenth standard, also for different. Competitive exams, various competitive exams, different top educators of India, they will be teaching you for different subjects, different competitive exams. So first, download an academy learning app, install, open, and then click on plus option. So when you click on plus option, you are able to see different goals. So you are able to see IIT, JEC exams, foundation and NTSC. So click on foundation and NTSC. Since you are studying in class ninth and tenth standard, but if you are the one who are studying in class eleventh and twelfth standard, you can go for NEET or uh, JE, IIT JE. Okay, so click on foundation and NTSC, and then click on get subscription. So when you click on get subscription, you are able to see different month subscription. So twelve and twenty four month subscription is really affordable. Okay, not only for the competitive competitive exams like NTSC, but also for different exams like NSCJS, NSTSC, National Science Olympiad. So we will be teaching for all of these uh, competitive exams at the same time. If you want preparation for board exams, so that also we will be doing, right? And also, if you want to prepare for NEET or JE, we will be having foundation classes for uh, I can say for NEET and JE as well after the board exams, right? So take the subscription as soon as possible, but don't forget to use our code Foundation Live to get ten percentage discount. Okay, Foundation Live is our code. If you want to take the subscription of NEET or JE, again you can use our code Foundation Live, and also you are able to access to the free classes. So click on special classes to experience plus for free, right? So let's quickly begin the class. But like the video, share the video, and subscribe to our channel. Yes, improvement in food resources lecture three. Yes, so we have discussed about crop variety improvement in our previous classes by hybridization techniques, by modification, gene modification. We have seen golden rice, and yes, we also have seen BT cotton, BT brinjal. So we have understood how exactly we can improve the crop varieties, and what is the purpose of improving the crop varieties? Also, we have understood in our previous classes, right? In the lecture two. But today we are going to understand crop production improvement. How exactly the production of crops can be improved, can be can be increased, right? Yes. So there are different ways of improving the production of these crops, right? So the very first is nutrient management. So in order to increase the production of these crops, also we have to apply or we have to introduce. Enough amount of nutrients for these crops, right? Because they should be able to produce higher amount of products, correct? So, what are the different nutrients that can be that can be introduced? So, what are the essential nutrients we have to introduce? Yes, we are able to divide into macronutrients and micronutrients. The name itself says macro, large amount. Right, so they are present more than one milligram, one mg per gram of dry weight. Right, so these particular macronutrients they need to be introduced into the crops in higher amount, at least more than one gram per gram of dry weight of the crops. Right, so some of the examples for macronutrients, yes, you know it: carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. nitrogen phosphorus potassium macronutrients correct npk coh cho so these three these are these these three are non mineral nutrients 
right so these all are mineral nutrients whereas these three can be considered as non mineral nutrients which are essential for crop crop production improvement right so coming to yes even calcium magnesium and sulfur right so oxygen hydrogen carbon nitrogen phosphorus potassium calcium magnesium sulfur these all can be considered as macronutrients whereas these three are non mineral nutrients whereas these six are these six are mineral nutrients okay so among 13 essential mineral nutrients so six are macronutrients whereas other seven are micronutrients so what are these micronutrients micro small right so they are present less than 1 mg per gram of dry matter so they should be applied they should be introduced into the plants in such a way that they should be less than 1 mg per gram of dry matter correct yes so the examples very important macro and micro so micro iron manganese boron zinc copper molybdenum and chlorine okay so seven micronutrients and six plus three yes these are macronutrients so these nutrients need to be introduced into the plants in order to increase the production of the crops right yes so how these how can be these nutrients can be introduced or increased in the crops that we are growing yes so again we are able to divide different methods to introduce these nutrients into the crops that is manures and fertilizers right manures and fertilizers so manures can be of usually vegetable waste or excreta of different animals right so these all are natural fertilizers manures are natural fertilizers so again manures can be divided into farm yard manure compost and green manure right so manures are natural fertilizers so farm yard manure what is this farm yard manure so these are these are nothing but excreta or remnant fodder or urine of cattles which can be introduced into the crops in order to increase the nutrient value of the soil so that crops can acquire these nutrients especially npk okay npk in order to increase these nutrients farm yard manure can be introduced farm yard manure is nothing but it can be excreta urine fodder or other waste that has been produced in the farm yard that is it has been produced by the cattles right so coming to compost so compost is nothing but it is the waste of different animals like cattle horse or also poultry if you consider and also at the same time even human excreta also can be you know used for the making of compost at the same time some of the vegetable waste can also be taken for the for making of compost okay so very good example for compost is vermi compost so vermi compost is actually made by earthworm ferritima as you know right so again there are different techniques to make this compost okay it will take some months so they are able to you know produce higher uh, nutrients when compared to the farm yard manure okay coming to green manure what is this green manure i have given you example of green manure okay certain uh, leguminous plants certain plants they will be introduced or they will be used in the plowing mulching of the soil okay so some of the example uh, of plants which can be used as green manures are sun hemp cowpea okay some of the leguminous plants uh, usually taken for green manure so these are different types of manure compost farm yard manure and green manure so next coming to fertilizers 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 what are these fertilizers so fertilizers are man made 
it has been you know created using some chemicals so again there are different types of fertilizers nitrogenous fertilizers what can be the example for nitrogenous fertilizers again we are able to divide into organic and inorganic right so npk npk is nothing but a uh, fertilizers uh, for the production of fertilizers basically it should be containing npk what is npk nitrogenous for uh, nitrogen phosphor and potassium so example some of the types are nitrogenous type of fertilizers so nitrogenous again we can divide into organic and inorganic type of nitrogenous fertilizers urea is one of the example for nitrogenous fertilizers right ammonium nitrate ammonium sulfate these all can be example for nitrogenous fertilizers coming to phosphatic fertilizers phosphatic fertilizers if you consider potassium chloride potassium sulfate potassium nitrate these all are example for phosphatic fertilizers basically it should contain npk so phosphatic the name itself says the phosphate con phosphate concentration is quite more right so coming to potassic potassic is nothing but uh, potassium chloride potassium nitrate sorry phosphatic our example can be a uh, single superphosphate or triple superphosphate this is example for phosphatic fertilizers whereas potassic fertilizers example can be potassium chloride potassium nitrate potassium uh, potassium sulfate as well right yes so coming to complex fertilizer so complex fertilizers is complex of all these combinations right so <clears throat> nitrophosphate can be example for complex fertilizer ammonium sulfate can also be example for complex fertilizers right so bio fertilizers bio fertilizers usually certain blue green algae like cyanobacteria and rhizobium can be used as bio fertilizers in order to you know grow only certain type of crops like rice maize or let's say certain leguminous plants okay so they can be either symbiotic or non symbiotic type of organisms like rhizobium cyanobacteria can be uh, used as bio fertilizer and mycorrhizae what is this mycorrhizae you know what is mycorrhizae right so myco we know mycota fungus right rhiza is nothing but root so mycorrhizae is a symbiotic association between fungus and roots of higher plants okay so yes mycorrhizae is used as a fertilizers so these fungus they will cause increase in the uptake of nutrients or water from the soil okay in order to increase the production of products in the case of crops right i hope you have understood fertilizers nitrogenous phosphatic potassic complex bio fertilizers mycorrhiza correct so going to the next type of increasing in the crop yield production of the crops that is by irrigation so what is this irrigation very easy irrigation is nothing but supplying of the water to the crop plants by means of different means like wells reservoirs tube well deep well and other more right so this is nothing but meaning of irrigation so again we are able to differentiate different types of irrigation system canal system tanks well uh, dug wells and tube wells okay so let's understand what is this canal system yes the image itself says so canals a man made a canals which can be again branched into branches canal branches okay and also these branched canals again it can be divided into field channels okay so water is taken from the reservoir and transferred to the canals and from these canals again the water is transferred to the field by branched canal and again uh, we are able to differentiate or we are able to uh, you know divide these canals into the field channels right so this is canal system so coming to the tanks 
so we have got tanks in our house as well so it this in the same way the tanks are being used for the irrigation right so using this tanks large amount of water is stored and then it is supplied to the different fields so coming to the next type that is wells wells again there are of two types dug wells and tube wells right dug wells and tube wells so we have seen wells around our house some of you you may have in your house as well right wells so what is this dug well so it has been the wells are been created by digging and it's really easy to draw water from these from these wells right so these type of wells it need to be you know made only in the places where there is no saline water in the underground right so dug wells are nothing but they have been created by digging and it is really easy to draw water okay by uh, bullocks it can be drawn water can be drawn from dug wells okay manually it can be drawn by dug wells so next type is tube well so very good example for tube wells can be bore right so we know that people will be uh, you know making this bores to to draw to draw under water underground water so for the drawing of these water from the tube wells we know that pump is required electricity need to be required it's not possible to mechanically draw water from tube wells right so this is two type of wells tube well and dug well and we will be making a you know really deep wells using tubes in the case of tube wells correct so coming to the next type of irrigation system that is river lift system river valley system drip and sprinkler sprinkler system right so we have seen different types till now so again we are able to differentiate the irrigation system into river lift system river lift system the name itself says so this type of irrigation system is carried in the places where there is river obviously right so here water is lifted from the river using different channels as you can see right so river lift system and then river valley system so this particular irrigation system is followed in the places like kerala and karnataka because they have got western ghats right so western ghats they will be having the steeps right so in these places half of the year that is approximately 5 months they will be having a heavy rain whereas other 6 7 months they won't be having enough rain so in the steeps of the ghats or the valleys different crops are being grown like coconut areca trees these type of crops will be grown in the steeps because water will be coming from the ghats through the steeps right yes so last type that is yes drip and sprinkler system so this is very famous but quite expensive right drip and sprinkler system so you know what is drip irrigation system so water is dripped right so water will be transferred or i can say it is introduced into the crops in a drops right yes so that is drip irrigation system what about sprinkler so water is sprinkled what water is sprinkled right on to the crops but there is a quite a disadvantage in sprinkler system because there will be lot of wasting of water as well as you can see here right water is quite wasted as well water can also be sprinkled on the places where there is no crops as well right using sprinkler system whereas drip irrigation system is uh, even if it is quite expensive because lot of pipes need to be uh, used for the irrigation system but there is no water loss okay there can be quite a amount of water is lost in sprinkler system so coming to water augmentation so what is this water augmentation so this is nothing but preserving of water preserving of water especially in the places where they where they have a heavy rain 
for first half month for first half year and next half year if there is no enough rain this type of systems can be carried to preserve water okay so water augmentation it will assure the supplying of water irrigation system to the crops okay so there are two types of preserving water that is rain water harvesting and watershed management so rain water harvesting very famous so many of you you might have done projects on rain water harvesting there can be many many different types different methods can be introduced for rain water harvesting of course nothing but collecting of rain water uh, so it can be collected in the tanks or wells at the same time the water also need to be purified if it is falling on to the terrace and if you are connecting this uh, water which is present in the uh, you know uh, terrace and then if you want to transfer it to the wells the water need to be quite purified right so rain water harvesting as you can see in different ways it can be done rain water harvesting right harvesting or preserving the rain water coming to watershed management so here again the water is collected in the dams and then it is released into the places so that the ground water is increasing right so it will cause increasing in the percolation of water in the particular land okay so all the water if it is preserved if it is channelized into the small dams and if you are able to collect this water in one particular area it will percolate or it will you know get absorbed by the ground and this is how the ground water can increase water table increase right yes so these are different types of water irrigation system and water augmentation as well right so also by having different crop patterns we are able to increase or we are able to improve the crop production right mixed cropping mixed cropping so what is this mixed cropping so this we have also discussed in our previous classes so as you can see here many crops they are being grown in a mixed way right so it's not that any crop you are able to grow in a mixed cropping type of pattern so there is a you know particular manner we have to grow not not simply we can grow a different crops in one particular area so you are able to see certain crops that are involved in the mixed cropping so maize and urd bean they are grown together in the mixed cropping right in a mixed way, mixed way not in a regular manner so if i have given you example in the previous class as well how exactly mixed cropping can be done right so in no regular patterns or no regular rows we will be growing different crops correct so maize and urad bean is grown together cotton and moong bean groundnut sunflower is grown together right wheat and mustard wheat and chickpea barley and chickpea can also be can also grown together in mixed cropping so here some of the crops that we are growing in the mixed cropping okay if you see here two crops is been grown together so one crop it should require higher amount of nutrients whereas one more crop that we are growing along with this crop it should need small amount of nutrient availability at the same time the height of the two crops matters so one crop should be tall other crop should be quite small in the height okay so nutrient requirement also should differ between these two crops even water availability also should differ one crop that we are growing in the mixed cropping it need to have or it need to take up only small amount of water other crop it need to take up large amount of water if both the crops if they take larger amount of water what can happen there will be competition between these two crops okay yes so this is about mixed cropping yes so about other crop patterns we will be discussing in detail in the coming classes so thank you so much for watching and yes don't forget to take the subscription and use our code foundation live if you want to take the subscription of neat as well j as well 
and you know for the foundation as well you can use our code foundation life to get 10 percentage discount and yes please like the video share the video subscribe to our channel and always if you have got any sort of doubt you can ask me either through comment or by telegram app and don't forget to click on bell icon so that you won't be missing any of the classes right and also you are able to download the pdf i hope the class was helpful so please like the video and let's meet in the coming classes bye bye